Hello everyone. While starting off with music lessons or a singing session, we start by tuning our ears and minds to the beautiful, soothing and the steady sound of the tambura. Have you ever wondered as to what the tambura actually plays and why is it that we use the tambura for guiding our voices? Well, today let's understand the tambura better. This beautiful instrument in its most gentle form has four strings which create a continuous harmonic sound that guides your voice to a particular shruti or the starting pitch for the scale. Now let's understand another basic concept before we proceed. Once you decide on a scale to sing in, you start by fixing the tonic note which is essentially the sa or adhara shadjam. Once you fix the sa, all the other notes are then automatically decided relative to the position or the frequency of the sa that you have chosen. This includes the upper sa, which is again the tonic note in the next upper octave. Once these two tonic notes are fixed, the pa or the panchama, which is the dominant note of the scale, is fixed at the exact mid frequency between the two tonics of the shadjams. While the other notes in the selected scale can have variants, the two sas and the pa are fixed irrespective of the raga that you choose to sing in. Hence, these three frequencies can be used as guides to keep our voice in the selected scale. Let's say you are singing in a particular shruti. The tambura is tuned to play these stable notes across the octave, starting with pa, followed by the two sas of the higher octave, and then the adhara shadja. So it will sound something like this. The hum created by the tambura helps us easily identify our scale and pitch our voices correctly. Hence, we start our vocal practice by singing Sa Pa Sa as discussed in our previous video of the series. Once we have tuned our voices to these stable notes, we can then easily traverse through the various notes in a rendition while the hum of the tambura serves as a constant reminder of the anchor note. Since all the other notes are relative to this anchor, it makes it easy for us to then keep pitching perfectly. So there you go. As simple as the tambura's construction and working might seem, it is by far one of the most important instruments possibly ever invented. While the tambura can never really play any melody by itself, it is like a sailor's compass serving as a constant guide and keeping us going with an even keel in the right direction. So I urge you to always practice with the tambura playing regardless of how certain you are about your shruti. I hope you have found learning about the tambura both interesting and useful. We'll continue discussing more such concepts in this series. Have a good day.